Hey folks, today it's about recreating the famous Doppler effect inside of Bitwig Studio. And to explain this roughly, this is not a physics experiment, right? So it's not about precision, it's more about explaining what happens in the real world. So this is you on the street, right? And there's some kind of car on the street driving past you or up to you. And you kind of hear the engine from the from the car but because the car moves and it also uh, moves up to you the sound waves are getting uh, squeezed together which, my, which, which means it sounds like pitched up so you hear the sound of the car engine but it's pitched up until it's exactly in front of you then the car is also the loudest and um, the pitch is more or less static but as soon as the car drives past you and away from you, you still hear the sound from the car engine, but now it's the opposite. The sound waves are getting stretched out and they sound kind of pitched down. And this is what we are trying to simulate inside the grid with some easy patching, some easy modules. And I want to show you this. So this is here our sound source. So this is not what we are talking about. It's just a placeholder for some kind of sound effect. Maybe you have a car sound, an engine sound, or maybe um, um, some, um, I don't know, a spaceship or whatever that, that you want to have to fly by. So this is our sound engineer. So it's just a, you know, just some kind of um, placeholder sound here, maybe a peak limiter on there. Okay, so and now we want to implement this Doppler effect here with an FX grid. And we know we need to change the volume because sometimes the sound effect or the sound source is close to you and sometimes it's far away. When it's far away, then you probably want to tune down the volume. And then we need a delay and the delay is for implementing the squeezing and the stretching of the sound waves, which means uh, pitching or pitching, pitching up or pitching down the, the, the pitch. And also we need a pen to move the sound to the left or to the right. And as an interface, we are going to use the X and Y pad here. And I usually never use this, so I thought it's a great opportunity to actually use this here in the grid uh, for this experiment. Okay, so we have two outputs here for, for X, Y and coordinates. And we also uh, select this device here and switch it to bipolar mode on the left side. So now we have positive and negative ranges, right? Positive, negative, positive and negative. And um, this is here the Y out up and down. Okay. So the first thing we want to implement is basically the volume change. So every, every time the sound source is not in the middle here of this uh, X, Y pad, um, we want to tune down the volume. So we do this with the modulator, of course. And we use here the output of maybe the blue first, right? And then we modulate your attenuate. So every time we go up, you can see the volume goes down, right? But when you go in the negative range, nothing happens. Why? Because we only modulate it here in um, the negative range. And when we go negative here, it goes in the positive range. So we have to switch the negative values to positive values. And we can do this with an absolute uh, module here. And this one turns basically uh, negative values to positive values and positive values stay positive. So when you use an oscilloscope here and use the output here and see when we go up, we go positive. When you go negative, we go negative. When we use here the absolute with this, you can see positive goes positive, negative goes also positive. Okay, and this is exactly what we need. So you modulate your attenuate with this. So we go positive and it goes quiet. We go negative and it also goes quiet. So it's exactly what we want. 
And we also probably want to use the modulator out and switch this to logarithmic, uh, which means here uh, it, it gets faster quiet and then at the end it becomes more fine-grained, right? So you can see at the first few millimeters, first few inches, uh, are doing a lot of modulation. And then at the end, you need to move more and more to actually modulate something, right? So it's a different curve, a different modulation curve. That's what I want to say. And then we also need to do this here with the, with these ones, with the, uh, what's that? That's the X out. So we do the same and we just add this here, do that. So left, uh, right side, we move away, left side, we also move away. So let's try this out. Okay. So basically you are always here in the center of this XY pad and this is your sound source and you can move the sound source around around you and then see what happens. So now we have here the volume change. Um, let's call this volume. Volume change. So now we implement here the pitch. So uh, we basically do kind of the, th the same thing without the absolute, I think. So let's let's use this here. Um, and let's modulate delay. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we also need here probably an absolute. So we need to implement this here also for left and right. Um, so we do that the same. Okay. So we need to find here also um, nice uh, modulation amounts. Maybe that's that's a bit too much here to simulate the real world. So this is not about precision. It's more about does it sound good or realistic or does it sound um, believable? So you can find here the sweet spot of all these modulations if you want to. Um, so now we have this, we also want to use here the pen for the left and the right. So we need the, um, the red out here. Let's use this. So if we move to the right here, we want to modulate all the way to the right. Okay, let's try this. So this is one way of doing it. Um, we can also um, use here maybe a convolution reverb. And this is uh, maybe I find some real, real places here, real rooms. And you probably are better off here with some main hall. Let's see, it's maybe too big. Wooden attic. Okay, let's use this.
Okay, so now we can basically say when the sound source here is close, um, I can take here the volume out. Um, when the sound source is close, we want to have pretty close sound, so less room. We want to have less room in there, and we want to have as much as possible try a try, a try signal. And then we, when we move away, we want to hear more the room instead of the closed sound source. And you probably also can just use my um, my panner, my binaural or yeah, realistic panner from yesterday's video in this instead of just using here the pen knob. So you can implement here after in the post FX can just input here my uh, panner from yesterday's video and use that for more rest realistic panning. And that's it for today's video. So I put the preset here in the description below so you can download it if you want to. And uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.